My name is John and I'm a web developer who's passionate about web accessibility. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a standard website navigation into a mega menu and how to ensure that it's accessible to users of all abilities. Let's get started. I've created us this basic navigation to start off with. When a user clicks on the products link, I want to open up a mega menu below it. So let's start by creating a place for the markup for that mega menu to go. We'll add that as a sibling to the products link here. So we're going to add div with an ID of products. Then we're going to modify our links href attribute so it matches the ID of the div that we just created. We're doing this so that when the product link is clicked on, we can use the href attribute to tell a corresponding mega menu to open up. In this case, clicking the products link will open up the products mega menu. Now this video is intended to focus on accessibility, so before recording, I created a set of classes to handle styling so that we don't need to spend a lot of time writing CSS. We'll only be looking at the CSS if it has something specific to do with accessibility. I'm going to update what we just added so that when we're done, it's styled the way I'd like it to look. Now we're going to put an ordered list within this mega menu. Within the ordered list, we're going to create some list items and we're going to have a tags within those for the class of list link. We're going to copy the li a couple times. Then we're going to copy and paste our ordered list a couple times. And voila, our mega menu has appeared. But we don't want this to appear by default. We want it to appear when a user has clicked on the products link. So we need a way of toggling this between open and closed. To do that, we're going to use an aria attribute and some CSS. Within our markup, let's add this. aria expanded equals false. Once that's added, our mega menu will no longer be visible. ARIA attributes add additional information to our markup that assistive technology is used to help users with disabilities better use what we build. In this case, we're using the ARIA expanded attribute and setting it to false because by default, our mega menu is closed. If I were to open up our CSS, we'll also see that in this case, I'm using that ARIA attribute to style whether our mega menu is set to display none or display flex. If I were to change this attribute to be true, our mega menu would appear again. Let's set it back to be false and create a way of toggling this aria attribute. To do this, we're going to need to write some JavaScript. We're going to start off by adding an event listener to any link in the negative in the navigation with an href attribute that starts with pound. We're going to do that with var mega menu links. We're going to set that to be equal to document.query selector all nav a href caret equals pound. And I'll explain what that's doing in just a second. Then we're going to have a for loop var i equals zero. i is less than meg, mega menu links dot length i plus plus. This will find all the links in the nav with an href attribute that starts with pound. Now we're going to iterate over them. And within this for loop, we want to add an event listener that will call handle link click on any when any links are clicked. So mega menu links i dot add event listener click handle 
link click now let's create that handle link click function We're going to start up by writing the function and call e.preventDefault. Then remember in the beginning when I said that we wanted to make sure that the href attribute of the link matched the ID of the mega menu? Well, we're now going to use that href attribute to find the element that we want to change the aria expanded attribute on. To do that, we'll create a variable called target. We'll set it equal to document.querySelector. And within here, we're going to use ES6 string interpolation. E.target.get attribute href. If you're not familiar with the syntax, E.target.get attribute href, in this case, will be equal to ID products. So we'll be using document.querySelector to find ID products, and we'll set that to the variable target. Now we want to toggle the aria expanded attribute of target. We can do that with a pretty simple conditional statement. If target.get attribute aria expanded triple equals true. If it's true, we want to close it. So target dot set attribute aria expanded false. But if the conditional statement runs and aria expanded equals false, we want to set it to true. So else target dot set attribute aria expanded. True. All this does is check to see if the aria expanded attribute is true. If it is, it sets it to false. And if it's not, it sets it to true. Now, if I were to click on the products link, I'd see an error because I realized that I didn't set this href to be pound products. So if I let that go, save and click products we'll see our mega menu opening and closing this is where a lot of developers stop but this isn't a great experience for anyone who has to use their keyboard to navigate rather than a mouse let's see why let's try and navigate this website using a keyboard using a keyboard to navigate a website is a skill that's not exactly easy even for the best of websites we're going to focus on simple navigation here by pressing the tab key to move forward, the shift tab key to go backward, and enter to press links. Once we start navigating and select products, we can tab through, but in order to get to the second link in the main navigation, we have to get all the way to the end. Also, if we want to get back to the first link, we have to navigate all the way back through our mega menu. We can do much better than this for our users. What we want is for the user to be able to tab through the main navigation by default. If they select our products link, we want the user's focus to be brought to the mega menu. And we want the user to only be able to focus on elements within that mega menu. This is called a tab trap and is intended to help users with assistive technologies. In a tab trap, if the user is on the last element in the tab trap, in a tab trap, if the user is on the last element in the tab trap and they try to navigate forwards, their focus is brought to the first element in the tab trap. Likewise, if the user is on the first element in the tab trap and tries to navigate backwards, their focus should land on the last element in the tab trap. Finally, to escape the tab trap, the user should only have to press escape for their focus to return to the link they previously clicked on. We're going to need to add some JavaScript in order to do this. In addition to what the user is pressing, we're going to need to keep track of three things in a tab trap. One, 
what element the user first selected, two, what the first element in the tab trap is, and three, what the last element in the tab trap is. We're going to declare three global variables to keep track of this. Var last focus element var first tab stop var last tab stop. Now within our handle link click function, we can set the last focused element to whatever was clicked. To do that, we'll add last focused element equals document dot active element. Document dot active element is whatever the user is currently focused on. In this case, it'll be the product link, so we'll store that as a variable for later. Next, we want to define the first and last tab stop within our mega menu. To do that, we'll get all of the links within our mega menu and set the first tab stop to be equal to the first element in that node list and the last tab stop to be equal to the last element in that node list. We'll do that with var focusable elements. We'll set that to be equal to target dot query selector all a. So that'll get all of the links within the mega menu, set it to the variable focusable elements. We'll set the first tab stop to be equal to focusable elements zero. And we'll set the last tab stop to be equal to the last element in this array. So focusable elements Uh, and to get the last one, we'll do focus focusable elements dot length minus one. After that's all said and done, we want to set focus to the first tab stop, and we'll do that with first tab stop dot focus. Now if we were to start tabbing around our navigation, it wouldn't see much of a difference except we were brought to the first tab stop here. But that's because we're not listening for the keyboard events that I mentioned earlier. To do that, we'll need to find all the links in our mega menu, iterate over them, and add an event listener to each that calls a function to see what we should do. That'll look something like this. var targets equals target dot query selector all a we're going to iterate over that with for var i equals zero i is less than targets dot length i plus plus and then we're going to add an event listener to all of these targets so targets i add event listener. We're going to listen for the key up event. And on that event, we're going to call handle key press. Now we'll need to write that handle key press function to make the tab trap work. We'll start off by writing function handle key press and in here we'll want to listen for three events we'll want to listen for when the user presses tab to move forward we'll want to listen for when the user presses tab while holding shift to move backward and we'll want to listen for when the user presses escape to leave the tab trap we'll determine what key the user has pressed with e dot key code and e dot shift key. Key code will give us a number that corresponds with a specific key and shift key will tell us whether the user is holding shift at the same time. The key code for tab is nine and the key code for escape is 27. 
So our logic will look something like this. If e dot key code triple equals nine and not e dot shift key, then the user is trying to navigate forward. If e dot key code triple equals nine and e dot shift key, then the user is trying to navigate backward. And finally, if e dot key code triple equals 27, then the user is trying to tr leave the tab trap. With that in place, we can finish up our logic with this function. If the user is trying to navigate forward and the user is focused on the last tab stop, we want the focus to be brought back to the first tab stop. We'll do that with if document dot active element triple equals last tab stop e dot prevent default and first tab stop dot focus. Likewise, if the user is trying to navigate backwards and they're on the first tab stop, we want their focus to be brought to the last tab stop. We'll do that with if document dot active element triple equals first tab stop e dot prevent default and last tab stop dot focus. Finally, if the user presses escape, we want to do two things. We'll want to click on the last focused element so that our handle link click function runs to toggle the aria expanded attribute. And then we'll want to focus on the element so the focus ring appears around it for our users. We'll do that with last focused element dot focus and last focus element dot click. Now if we go ahead and try to navigate our website with a keyboard again, we'll see that all is working. Selecting the products navigation opens our mega menu. Tabbing to the end will bring us to the beginning. Tabbing back from the beginning will bring us to the end and pressing escape will bring us back to the main navigation. This is a much better experience than we first started off with. And now that you know how to do this, you can add it to any project that you work on. I'll be adding some comments to this file and we'll put a link to the code pen in the description below. Thank you for taking your time to watch this video and for making the web a better place for users of all abilities.